Joe Bordo, nice to have you on the air again. Thank you very much. Good to be back with you a couple of weeks later. It, and and uh, beautiful in St. Pete today. Yeah, it's uh, about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, we are still uh, dealing with um, uh, spiking numbers with COVID-19. So nothing much has changed here. Certainly has not gotten any better. Hunker down and have a continuous supply of margaritas. That's my, that's my <laughs> suggestion. A good idea, yeah, yeah. Okay, principles of trust and cooperation, what are they? Well, I'd like to break it down into the simplest possible uh, uh, items, and at least so I can understand it. And when you think about um, why you trust somebody and why you uh, are likely to cooperate with them, uh, it comes down, in my mind at least, to a couple of different things. One is um, you listen to what they say, and what they say over time tends to be consistent. And uh, then you look at what they do and uh, you uh, uh, see whether they do what they said they were going to do uh, on a consistent basis. And over time, uh, trust builds up. And if it's in a business setting, you tend to cooperate uh, with them. This really starts in sales. If you're trying to develop a, a relationship with a customer, um, you know, trust uh, is very important in that situation uh, to get their cooperation with doing uh, what you think they should be doing and uh, to uh, to make a sale. Now, in an organizational setting, it gets even more magnified uh, because, uh, you know, the definition of leadership is you're leading more than one person. And uh, uh, so uh, that opens up a whole nother set uh, of issues with trust and cooperation. But it starts there. And um, uh, how people hear what you say, um, how people see what you do, and is it consistent over time, and can they begin to trust you? You mentioned leadership. Just tell us about what makes a good leader. I mean, with the military, it used to be firm, fair, honest, and approachable. <laughs> what, about with, uh, what about in business? Well, I, you know, in my opinion, at least, and in most cultures, uh, I think it works that if uh, the people you are trying to lead trust you, it's going to be a whole lot easier than if they don't. Uh, in organizations where there is no trust of management and leadership, uh, people spend all kinds of time uh, creating noise and worrying about everything except what they should be worrying about. So good leadership is going to cut the noise in an organization um, and uh, have more likelihood of success. How hard is it to achieve when you're running numerous franchised businesses around the country and the globe? Well, uh, I think around the country, at least, uh, the difficulty is uh, realizing that it, it, it it gets harder than if you're dealing with a small group of people all in one office. In a franchise organization, you're dealing with a bunch of CEOs. These are people who own their own businesses, their own franchises, and they are going to be looking very, very closely at their leader, their franchisor, um, and uh, to decide if they're going to cooperate with what the franchisor wants to do. And if there's a breakdown in trust, there's not going to be cooperation. If there's really a bad breakdown in trust, uh, you know, there could be lawsuits. There could be franchise associations formed. There could be all kinds of uh, time being spent on things that are not productive uh, because uh, trust and cooperation has broken down. Um, around the world and uh, globally, it gets even more difficult because you have different cultures. And it's very easy for a leader to do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing if they've not taken enough time to, one, understand, and two, respect uh, a culture, you know, that is not their own. So it's the same thing, uh, but it just gets more difficult and more complicated. And uh, the leader needs to spend, you know, more time thinking about what they're saying and making sure that what they're doing is consistent with what they are saying. And if it's not, make sure they explain it. Can you teach uh, trust and cooperation? I mean, it's a fairly, it's a fairly bizarre question, I think, but it's a, a pertinent one at the same time. Well, I think it's, it's an easy concept to understand. So yeah, it should be easy to teach, but I think it usually gets uh, transferred more through coaching uh, and mentoring. I, I remember when I first uh, 
uh, walked into my corporate job, um, I said something and my boss at the time came over and put his arm around me and said, you can't say that because when you say something like that, it gets reported all the way down the hall. And by the time it gets to the other end, it's going to be completely misinterpreted. And people are going to start to wonder what you what you really meant to say or what you, what you really mean or what you really think. And and then you've got that noise again. You've got uh, uh, a breakdown in trust and and it's going to be harder uh, to cooperate. So I was mentored and coached uh, very well, you know, on this topic. And I was able to make the transition from a small business to a, a large organization as a result. What are some examples where things have turned around as a, maybe as a result of people being able to bring trust into their organization and business relationships? And how was this actually achieved? Well, it starts out by identifying where the breakdown occurred. Um, and that's not easy to do. Uh, that gets back to the earlier discussion we had a few weeks